Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my garden. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're talking about the Brugmansia, the angel's trumpet. Today is September the 2nd, 2020, and the plant stands just over 13 feet tall and just over 10 feet wide. So this is the trunk of the Brugmansia. Look at the size of that. Wherever you cut it, it puts out more branches. I've had a lot of questions regarding the care of this plant and to give more detailed information about its care and culture through the season. The care of this plant varies depending if it's going to be container grown in a cooler climate and brought inside for the winter or if it's going to be planted into the ground in a cooler climate and given winter protection with a cold frame, which is basically a mini greenhouse. This plant has been in the ground about six and a half years. I'm in zone 5B, Ontario, Canada. The plant does get cut back every year and have a cold frame put around it. It does have supplemental heat. A lot of people are asking me questions about how I care for this particular tree, how I get it to grow so tall and so on. Care for this plant is fairly straightforward. All of my tropicals and subtropicals are planted in raised beds, and each year they're amended with a layer of compost, cattle manure, or sheep manure. And that's all I do for the rest of the season. In the early spring, as active growth commences sometime in March, every time I water the plant, I will water with a weak liquid fertilizer, a general 20-20-20. During the winter, the plants are not watered at all. During the winter, the plant basically goes dormant and growth is reduced to almost nothing. In early spring, as growth commences, I start to water lightly. As the weather warms up and I remove the cold frames from my plants, I start to water more regularly and frequently. You don't want to overwater because without active growth, the roots cannot absorb it and use it up. You will get root rot and the plant will suffer. Once active growth commences and the weather warms up, the cold frame is taken down and the soil is amended with a heavy layer of either compost, cattle manure or sheep manure. Beyond that is just regular uh, deep watering. I find that deep watering really does help the plant. Because it's planted in native soil, it does draw a lot of its nutrients from the ground so supplemental, uh, supplemental fertilizing is only done to encourage new growth in the spring. Now you can prune it to encourage growth in a specific direction or just to maintain its overall size. This plant is heavily pruned every fall. Every season it puts on between six to eight feet of growth and sometimes more. It gains more in height than in width. You can prune the plant easily to encourage growth in a specific direction to maintain a certain look or a shape. The more you prune, the more branches you'll create and the more flower buds because it only creates flowers on the terminal end of branches, which is the growing tips. After heavy pruning, you can at that point start new plants from those cuttings. The cuttings do root very easily in water and you can start many new plants from a tree this size. The plant does flower throughout the season, but typically it puts out a heavy bloom, I would say late spring and then again early September. When first starting out with a single branch with one shoot, it will not flower until that branch develops a Y. At that point it will start to produce flower buds. If you prune off the terminal buds, it will encourage branching. And the bushier the plant, the more flowers. It only produces flowers on the tips of the new growth. The old branches will not flower anymore. Prune it back to whatever is a manageable size. The plant does put on very rapid growth once the weather warms up. Even in a container, it does put on phenomenal growth. I'll show you an example shortly. Now this was in a pot, and if you partially buried the pot, 
it will put its roots out through the bottom of the pot and encourage much more active and bushy growth. In the fall, you can cut off the roots protruding from the base of the pot and bring it in. You'll have a much healthier, bushier looking plant. This is a container grown plant. It was plunged into the ground this past spring and you can see the amount of growth that's put on. It was basically a single stem cutting. Look at the size of the leaves and look at all the branching. The plant does put its roots down into the soil and it draws nutrients and water from the native soil. This is a comparison of the two Brugmansia plants. Both were planted into a similar size pot. They were a similar size thickness. And take a look at the difference. So as you can see, this plant, much more robust, much larger leaves. This one is partially in the ground. This one, similar size container, the same soil, everything in the container, but the fact the roots have gone into the soil makes a world of difference. Look at the size of the leaves by comparison. So plunge those pots into the soil. Look at the size of these leaves. It's a massive plant. You can never maintain a plant in a pot and have it look as bushy or as healthy as when it's planted in native soil. Here in the ground, the plant gets most of its nutrients from the native soil. The soil is amended annually with a heavy layer of either compost or sheep manure or cattle manure. If you are a container growing your plants, I suggest you fertilize every time you water. So you mix a weak solution and every time you water the plant, you give it a light dose of fertilizer. And you do this throughout the growing season. During the winter, you don't water at all. You put the plant into storage. If it's in a container, into a cool, dark place, uh, some place that doesn't freeze, and take it out when growth commences next spring. What's more important than fertilizer is the watering. You have to be consistent about the water. You should never let your plant wilt during the summer when the days are hot and sunny and we haven't had rain. Be sure you water on a regular basis and water deeply. The plant will respond right away. If there's any wilting at all, it will perk up instantly. If you are a container growing your plants, uh, similar rules apply. You don't start fertilizing until you see active growth. When active growth begins in the spring, give it a light watering and once the first few leaves have formed you can start feeding it lightly. For winter storage you simply prune the plant back to a manageable size. Don't be afraid to cut it back, it won't hurt the plant. It will actually come back with more and thicker branches. The more you prune it the denser the canopy becomes. It gets more multiple branches and more multiple flowers because of it. As always, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe, give me a like, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Happy gardening.